Ever want to design 3D models, but didn't want to spend hours learning all different types of 3D modeling software? That's where AI steps in. It can turn a quick idea into a 3D model faster than ever. But there's one thing, it's not all magic. Today I'm going to show you how to create 3D models using AI. <laughs> Today we're talking about how to create 3D models from AI. Some people say it's cheating and some people see AI as a tool such as a hammer or a paintbrush. Other people see it as a bit of a shortcut or even a cheat because you're skipping a major part of the typical design process. When it comes to actually 3D printing those AI designs, you'll see there's a lot of pros and cons. Sometimes they print beautifully and other times you'll wish you just modeled it yourself. I'm going to show you one way I've used AI to create custom 3D models. And then we're going to put it to test, building something epic, a chess set of elves versus goblins. We sort of talked about this in our last video, and if you didn't watch that, I'll put a link in the description below. So we gave chat GPT a really simple prompt. Create a full body black and white rendering of a female elf from Dungeons and Dragons winking. I need to convert it for 3D printing. So make the image in a nice grayscale. Really simple prompt. And you can see chat actually gave us a really nice image based on that. But it had a base. And that'd be cool if we were just creating like a DMD miniature. But the reality is we're creating chess pieces and I want them to have consistent bases. So I asked chat to remove the base, which was great. And because I liked the way I got my result, I asked it if it could make a dwarf in the same style with armor and a battle axe. And it generated the dwarf, which same thing I really liked. So now we're going to move on to converting the image that ChatGPT made to a STL file. Now there are a ton of applications you could do this with. We're using Maker World, Maker Labs, image to 3D model. Now what we're doing is we're uploading our grayscale image. And as you can see, it takes a few minutes, but it generates a really decent 3D model. And we're just gonna keep repeating this with all of the ones we asked chat to do. As you see here, Maker Lab actually asks you to credit it if you wanna use commercial license. So remember that if you are gonna use this method in order to create some 3D models that you're gonna sell or you're gonna push out commercially. And then once we're done, we're just going to download everything. Now we're just going to measure some of our chess pieces. So that way we know exactly how big they are when we size our uh, miniatures. So we're just using our digital caliper in order to measure our chess pieces. So you see the pawn is about 35. Its base is about 20. And let's just get the rest of our pieces measured. The rook is 23 at the base. And it is 43, 44 tall. Now that we got everything measured, let's create our bases and 3D print our AI generated models. We're gonna go in Nomad Sculpt and we're gonna create our base here. And the reason why we're doing that is we want the bases to be consistent. So if we had AI doing that, it may add different rock textures or something to the base, um, which is fine, but we wanna make all the bases the same and have the same style. But we're making a really simple base here. So first, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna get rid of our spear. And now we're gonna import our model. Just gonna add it to the scene. And now we have our female elf. And this we're gonna use as the rook. This is what she looks like. She looks pretty cool with her little short sword. Now we're just gonna add a base. Now, if we go here, we see there are a ton of pieces to her. Um, I'm not really worried about that right now. What we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to add a cylinder. Now, that cylinder is going to be actually pretty small. Um, let's just move it over here for now. So, you see, it's actually relatively small in comparison. So, let's just scale it up so it's even close to the size we need. And let's just rotate this. There we go. So now we have what we're gonna start with as our base. We're gonna add in another radius. 
because we're going to want to make this one slightly smaller. We're going to bring down the height of this base. And now we're going to scale our model to fit that. So we're just going to uncheck our cylinder and we're going to check everything above here. Now we're just going to scale her down. Let's just grab our base. Well, we can move her to our base. And that's what we want to see. I mean, that was pretty spot on. But as you can see, that's looking pretty, pretty good. So now that we're happy with our base, we're just going to export our model and get her printed. Now, designing with AI is one thing. Begin those models off your screen and onto your printer is the real test. When designing with AI, you may actually be able to get some really detailed models that would be harder to do with modeling by hand. AI models could also give you a really good starting point that you just may have to make a few tweaks to in order to get a real printable model. It's also a great way to experiment quickly when you're not a pro at using CAD or design software. But there are some cons with modeling in AI. AI models often come with messy geometry, really messy. Things like overlapping faces, thin walls, and even holes in your models. You often need to spend time cleaning up your models in Blender, Mesh Mixer, or NetFab. Then they'll be ready to print. Scaling may also be really unpredictable. What looks fine to the AI may actually create a really fragile print in reality. And your supports can be really tricky because AI doesn't always follow print-friendly practices. Can you say that? three times fast. Well, AI may save you some time on the design side, you'll definitely lose a little bit of time on the cleanup and prep side. So now that we got our bases added, we're gonna bring everything into a uh, Chi2 box because we're printing on a Mars Elegoo Saturn. And we're basically going to import our files. And almost every time I've ever generated something from AI, it's actually asked me to repair the file. So we're just repairing the file. Now we're just gonna rotate it so it's standing up straight. And now what I want to do is I want to look at the scale of this. So I'm going to use the measure tool to see how big this model is. So let's just pull in our elf rook and see how she scales. Same thing, I had to repair her real quick. As we can see, she is in the correct scale for a rook. And the dwarf is in the correct scale for a pawn. Based on the chess set we currently have. Now, all we need to do is export these and we'll print them. So we're gonna get our fantasy chess pieces printed. We're printing the plate with the dwarves on it and we're gonna use this Crit B uh, standard polymer resin. Let's get it poured in and let's get these printed. So, as you can see, I got the pawns and the rooks complete, and overall they look pretty good, but I want to show you a couple of things on each one of these models, because I pretty much printed these directly from what the AI created, and I didn't do any modifications. So, I'm going to show you a couple of things where I should really go back in and fix these things before 3D printing these again. So, let me bring over a few of each model, and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about up close. As you can see on this one, you can see the front, like his loin cloth, didn't complete. It was very narrow. So you can see here it broke on the back. On this one, it sort of made it, right? And but you can see here on the front, it sort of it sort of snapped. That was really thin. Like I'd go back in and pretty much uh, make that a little bit thicker. Other than that, the print came out pretty well. Now let's go to our Elf Rook, which same thing, came out really well overall. But as you can see here, we sort of had the same problem. The back of her skirt, this one made it a little further, cracked. So you can see it was just too thin. The AI just made the cloth way too thin. 
but I mean, she actually has some really cool wisp in her hair. And overall, I would say her sword is probably a little too thin. I didn't even want to take off these other little nubs because it was so thin, I was afraid I would break the sword. But overall, she looks pretty good. Goblin Rook actually came out really well. You see this one, his sword broke. So, and once again, same thing, the weapon, you can almost see through it, right? The weapon is so, so thin. But overall, looks pretty good. This one actually did break when I was removing it from the sports because it is so thin. But overall, he's thick and meaty enough where he's pretty solid for a game piece. Same thing with our dwarf uh, pawns. They actually came out really, really well. As you can see here, the issue was with his battle axe. You can see it was a little thin on the blade and it just literally didn't form uh, when the resin was printing, but overall, he looks really, really good. So, really good details on them. You still need a little cleanup, but overall, really nice, really nice details. Overall, the AI did a really good job on the overall design of these characters, but once again, it didn't take things like good print practice into play and as you can see some of the pieces were just way way too fragile as ai advances the results are going to get better and better for 3d modeling but still at the end of the day it may not be the right choice for everyone so that's ai modeling in action fast creative and a little unpredictable you can create ideas and prototypes in minutes, but you'll often need to clean up the model before it's truly print friendly. Whether you see AI as a helpful tool or a bit of a shortcut, the reality is here and makers, DIYers, and even professionals are figuring out how to use AI in their workflow. At the end of the day, whether it's a chess set of elves vs. goblins or your own creative idea, AI can be a powerful addition to your toolbox. If you're interested, I'll upload all these files to makerbuildit.com and Maker World for free. And when I finish the entire chess set, I'll upload all the pieces in both places. I'll also add some links in the description below if you're interested in downloading them. If you like this build, remember to hit the like button and in the comments below, let me know if you think AI is a tool or sort of a shortcut or cheat. For more on 3D printing, DIY, and maker projects, make sure you like and follow Maker Build It and remember, keep on making. And I hope you woke up today and know you are loved.